Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm back with number four of the handbag series. Anybody that's new to the channel, I'm working my way through this book. I've already bookmarked all of the ones that I want to try and there's still more in there as well. But today we are going to make this one here and it's a Louis Vuitton Venice. Venice? and it's from 1998 to 99. I'm not going to do it in blue, I'm going to do a darker brown and then I'm going to keep the cream handles. So as always, this is obviously a leather bag, it's got a zip on it. I'm going to make this so it's a functioning gift bag so we can pop a gift in it. So there will be variations, but the style and the shape is very much like this. So let's start. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to make the ends of the gift bag. So I've already done one here, okay? Now, because we're working with circles, everybody's is going to be a different size. So I'm going to give you the measurements of the circle I've got here. But as long as you're close to that, then it will be fine because all of the other parts that we add to it are easy to adapt around whatever size it is that you've got. So I'm using a circle here, which is four and a half in diameter, which is about 11 and a half centimetres. What you want to do is sit it down on the cardstock, so whatever colour you want to be the ends. And I'm going to score around the outer edge, but you want to leave about an inch from the edge of the card because you're actually going to then cut a slightly bigger circle, which is going to be the tabs. So I'm just laying this down and I'm just going to go around and you want to make sure you've got something soft. So I've just got a self healing mat here just so you can get a score line. So I'm just going around there, just applying pressure until I can see the score line. Now you're going to want to do this twice. Don't worry about those marks, you're not going to see any of that. But now you'll see my circle. Next, I'm going to cut around this circle about half an inch away from it. Or maybe three quarters. You want it to be less than an inch because the piece that we're going to wrap around this, this here, this is one inch wide. So you want the tabs to go behind that. You just want to make sure that you've got a bigger circle around, like so. And then with some sharp scissors, you want to cut up to that score circle and you want to each gap needs to be or each cut needs to be about a quarter of an inch apart the closer they are together the better the circle shape that you're going to get so you'll see that i'm just going all the way around Okay, so now you have something like that. And then you just want to fold all of those tabs over and you'll see they just start to go around that score line. If it's folding into this circle, then you may want to burnish the circle score line a bit better because it should just naturally fold over. So you'll have something like this. I've now just cut myself two strips of one inch by 12. You can do one by 11 if you've only got a four card, that will work because we're going to be having to kind of join it up anyway. Now I would recommend getting yourself some pegs just to kind of hold parts of it together as you work your way around. Because what we're going to do now is stick this onto the side of here and you can see all of the pieces inside there. Best way to start off, I'm going to use the cloud glue. So it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit fiddly, but once you get going, it, it becomes quite easy. Just get it started off, pop some glue onto just a couple of the, let's call them teeth, and then just grab the end of this here. Now, what I would also recommend is let it overhang just a tiny bit. If you can see there, I've got a little lip. See there? It just overhangs slightly. And I just think it's going to help anybody that may have cut past the score line. If you have that overhanging, it's going to kind of hide that. Whereas if you bring this right up to the edge, like so, I mean, it's up to you. If yours is really neat, then go right to the edge. But I'm just going to have mine just so it kind of overhangs. Let's take that stuff again. Just overhangs just a smidge, just a tiny bit. Okay. When you've got that in place, grab a peg and just hold that there like so and then I'm just going to lift that up pop my glue in and just keep doing work your way around in kind of different sections just adding your glue over a, you know a certain amount and then just wrap that around if you do have a bit overhanging make sure it, you know it's the same all the way around and then again just grab a couple of pegs just to keep that in place. 
Now you'll get so far round. You might have um, a three length, which will be, I think it's 16 and a half inches. So you'll probably then have enough to go all the way around if you've got long uh, cardstock. Also, this is a 220 GSM, I think. But you'll see when I bring that all the way around, I'm going to have a gap. So then you just want to patch it. So I've just got this other piece here and you'll just stick it down and then carry on until you cover there. Okay, so now you should have these two dishes. Okay, so pop them to one side, let them carry on drying. So next, now it's up to you whether you want to cut one or two sheets. I'm cutting two because I, this is that 220. It's a slightly lighter weight cardstock. If you're using a 300, even a 350, then I think one sheet will be enough. It just depends on what you're putting inside the bag as well. But this is the size is 10 by 11 now if you are going to stick two together like myself and even if you have the one actually you'll want to put a curve in this and i'm just using a ruler just to start to get some shape and if you just push it down and pull you'll be able to curve all of it and i'm going to now stick those two together and as it dries i want to keep it in this shape you could even use the tray because this is what it's going to go in i call it the tray but you could you as it dries you could shape it you know you could probably pop both over the top actually just so it kind of gets that there we go it will kind of hold itself in place while it's drying okay so i'm going to get that stuck together Okay, I just realised I didn't push record because I stopped what I was doing to let everything dry. So I'm actually just going to peel this off and quickly give you the measurements and explain what I'm doing there. So for the lid, there's two ways that you can do this. Now, you may want to, obviously, we've got this lovely detail on the edge and I don't want to hide that. But I also want the lid to be able to function properly and hide what's inside. If you want to keep this and you don't like the next step that I'm going to do, then you would just want to measure whatever your gap is here because everybody's going to be slightly different. You know, they, like I said, you might want to have yours much smaller, but measure the distance there. So you can see this is eight and one eighth and then cut a piece of cardstock that's eight and one eighth by the gap that you have here. And then that will just mean it will sit within this section and then we'll close it here with the Velcro or whatever it is that we're going to use to close and you know that's it but what might happen is is it might it might just dip or it might not sit properly because it's not going to have it it's all empty here and you might see in the sides here so what i'm going to do is i've cut this piece which is the whole length of my bag which is 10 and 1 8 so just measure the whole length and again the width that you need here now you'll need to decide how wide you want your piece that you're going to stick on the back and this is going to be your hinge now mine's one and a half this whole piece here is um it was a piece of scraps so it's six and three quarters and i've done a score line at one and a half okay and then i'm lining up the folded score line with the back piece here so i'm just going to reapply some of this glue it's still quite tacky when you lift the kalau glue it goes stringy that's when it's at its most sticky so but i just want to go over that just a bit more and then I'm just going to sit this over the back here and just lay it down. I know you can't see this now, but just make sure the score line runs, you see there, with the back of the bag. And just make sure that's really secure. Okay, so that's all secure. So you'll see now that wraps around really nicely. But obviously we've lost some of the detail. But what I'm going to do now is cut two strips of cream card and just pop it over the ends there so it continues that detail and that way we've not lost the design and we've still got a really good closure uh, which will hide your gift and you can also fold that back once that glue's completely dry just work that hinge back so it's really easy for the person to open like so okay so again the length of these strips is going to do you know be whatever 
this piece here is. So mine was six and three quarters and you want it to be, again, that one inch. So I'm just putting a little curve in them there. And then I've actually just made them a little bit longer because I think it's best to have it longer, stick it down and then trim off any excess. I've got a tiny bit overhanging them, but at least that way you get a perfect, you know, um, coverage. So I'm going to just pop my glue. So these are just purely decorative now. I think it really does finish the bag off. And you'll just have to refold that piece in a moment. So again, just follow it around that curve. Okay, and then I'm just work that back there just so you get the folds and I've just trimmed off the front there but now when that lies down you see it all lines up nicely okay next I've got four strips of one by 12 you'll trim these down but it's up to you where you have them now because wherever you place these is where I'm going to work the handle from so I'm going to have mine about an inch. I seem to be working in inches on all of this. So I'm coming out an inch from this piece. And I'm just, this is purely decorative, this one, but it's going to wrap all the way around to the join of this, not to the hinge. I think it would be best, or maybe I should actually. No, actually, I'm going to go up to the hinge. So I'm going to trim it when I get to that part. So whatever you do on this side, you want to do the same on that side there. So I'm just going to bring in my quick grab glue for this piece because, like I said, these are just purely decorative. So I'm just going to go so far like that and then just sit that one down and just wrap it around. And then just see... just going to just push with my finger there where that folds and then I'm just going to trim that okay so now I've got that one there because then the next one's going to start from there and come over to here and then I'm going to have my handles so again this is just all decoration so I'm going to do the next one on this side again just make sure whatever measurement you have here see a spot on one inch you want to do the same on this side Okay, so they're all stuck down and I've stuck the two on the top. You see, I've got them overhanging. I'm just deciding really how far down I want them to overhang. So I'm going to I'm going to use Velcro dots to close this. So I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do one and a half inches. So I'm just going to use a pencil there just to mark. Just like so again, so make sure this is completely wrapped around so again one and a half and then I'm just going to snip across there like so and then I've just cut these pieces which are one by three quarters of an inch and I'm going to score along the three quarters of an inch at three eighths so just halfway and then these are just going to be like little leather protectors, really, at the ends of those two strips. So just fold them in half and I'm just going to glue them onto the ends there. And I'm going to add a little curl into this again. It just kind of gives it a bit of a 
an authentic leather look you know when the leather kind of gets a bit worn at the ends it kind of lifts up like that that looks quite nice so i'm going to stick those onto the ends then i've got my glue dots these are the dot and dab ones so i'm going to actually first of all i'm just going to pop them into that section there like so and then make sure it completely wraps around and everything lines up like so and then you can just really push them down and do you know what doing the two layers of cardstock really made a huge difference on this it's solid it's a really nice strong gift bag so now cool really pleased with that then using the die that i drew around i've die cut two in the brown here and i'm going to pop them at each end you can just see there so i'm going to get them stuck down Okay, then I've just cut another strip. This is one by, again, 11 inches will be fine, three quarters, um, A4 length or 12, which I've got here. So, and that's by one inch wide. Along the 12 inch side, you want to score at one and 11 inches, just so you've got that shape. And I've just popped a, just again, a curve in there, like so. And then I'm going to stick this in the middle of my flap at the top there like so and then i'm going to finish it with some faux hardware and bits and pieces like that so i'm going to get them stuck down Okay, so I've just been sticking down these discs. They're just, well, they're, I say discs, the little plastic self-adhesive ones, but I've added glue just to secure them. They're wood grain. I, I've got a feeling they're paper mania. I've had them for a long time and I literally had just the right amount. And I just thought they looked like little kind of rivets, like hardware. But it, as you probably noticed, if you're making yours, it rolls a lot. So I also looked at some of the things I had in my stash and I picked these up. I shared them a long time ago and what did I get from the works? The little feet. I use them on the circle bag and um, I just thought they would be really good on this. So I, you can colour these any colour you want. You can heat emboss them. I think I did heat emboss. Oh no, actually, I think I went to use these on the circle bag and then I ended up using the longer feet. Um, so you can see I'm just using an alcohol marker just to cover everything. And I'll just let that one dry. And then I've got my heat gun and you basically need to kind of see where I think actually it's going to go right on that mark there, which is good because I got some glue there earlier. So I'm just going to pop a little, oh, let's use this one and just pop. If you get the two front ones lined up, then you'll be able to do the back ones easily. So there's that one. And then I'm going to have to kind of eyeball this so I think it's going to be about here and then you just need to kind of just you, you'll be able to see if you are putting feet on yours but I'm going to pop another little blob of glue there and then again just make sure one lines up like so and now there you go oh that works really well so yeah <laughs> there you go you can put some feet onto it as well i think it will make a big difference but it is a solid like i said i'm intrigued to see if a bottle of wine will fit in this but even if the 12 inch isn't enough and you've got um if you've got a three size paper like i said that's 16 inches then you could definitely make this as a really cool wine bottle bag so there you have it 
So I'll just bring back in my inspiration again. So it was this one here, but now I turned it into a, you know, a functioning gift bag. You've got all that space inside. It closes up really nicely. And then all I need to do is add a gift tag, you know, when I do come to giving that to someone. And it's got the little feet there, so it stands up really nicely. You can see everything all on the sides. You could also have your handle on the side if you want. You could pop, um, you know, some ribbon or just stick your cardstock to the sides and have a big handle that way. But I quite like this little one. It also reminds me of like a picnic blanket when you wrap them up and you have the straps. It kind of looks like that as well. So, but there you have it. So that is number four of my handbag gift bag series. Hope you're enjoying it so far. I've loved seeing the different versions that you've been making and sharing over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook page or group, sorry. So if you are on Facebook, Facebook and you haven't joined the group head over there because it's really lovely and you'll get lots of inspiration on you know just different ways to to make the projects that I share as always everything that I've used I'll try and find things like this I'll link it in the description box below and um, all the measurements and everything that I've used today will also be in my blog post and you'll find that linked in the description box as well check out some of the tutorials that might be popping up now along with a little picture of my face if you haven't subscribed and you enjoyed today's tutorial if you just click on my face you can subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell and that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new tutorial as always thanks for watching and I'll be back again very soon bye